When I play soccer with new people, the first person I identify is the center mid. This is the player who always wants the ball, will dribble th through three people rather than pass it, and who will give dirty looks to anyone on her team who loses the ball when she's calling for a pass. I was not this player. I was the one who didn't want the ball for too long, the one too scared to take someone one-on-one, -on -one, and the one too scared to make a mistake. I've been a part of the Life Design Lab for the past two years, and last year I chose to do a project surrounding creating a life out of sports. I ended up spending most of last year researching the effects of focusing too much on a sport, and after I collected a decent amount of evidence and information, I then presented it to some competitive athletes I knew. But to be honest, I didn't do much. I was constantly waiting for someone else to swoop in and take initiative. When the school year was coming to an end and we were assigned to reflect on our year, I realized I really didn't do anything. I spent my whole year waiting. When I returned to the academy this year, Mr. Daly and Mr. Madden kept mentioning how this was the year of doing. At the time, I didn't think much about it because I thought every year was the year of doing. But keeping that in the back of my mind, I started brainstorming ideas for possible projects. I found that Maggie and I had very similar ideas. Maggie's a freshman and we met playing on the varsity soccer team together. Our main goal was to help youth athletes. And we both had a lot of unique stories and experiences through youth sports. And we wanted to share, help others by sharing our experiences. Many people don't know this, but I played under a very toxic and abusive coach for about two years. And we talk about our bodies in inappropriate ways, body shame us, curse us out when we lost, and scream at us when we did something wrong. There was one time where he even threw a chair at the people on the bench after the other team scored a goal. I was terrified of my soccer coach, and I thought that was okay. But eventually when I realized that I shouldn't be afraid of my soccer coach, I left the program. And I knew many other athletes faced very similar situations, but were still in those situations. And I wanted to help them. Our first idea was Maggie was gonna write an, ar write an article and I was gonna give my st stories. At the time, I didn't realize it, but Maggie was my center mid, the one who swooped in and would do most of the work that I could tag along with. It wasn't until I suffered a severe concussion, sending me to the hospital in an ambulance that changed my mindset. My concussion made me lose my ability to do simple tasks like walking and reading. For the first three weeks, when my eyes were exposed to too much light, they would start to shake and involuntary close. And it messed up my equilibrium so bad where I couldn't walk across my room. Reading was challenging as all the words were just scrunched up letters, and it took me a month and a half to finally be able to read again. When I returned to school after a week and a half, mo I just sat in most of my classes doing nothing. My injury showed me that anything can be taken away from you in a matter of seconds, and to take advantage of the things you are able to do because you never know when you won't be able to do something. I wasn't taking advantage of the opportunities I was being given in Life Design Lab. I was given a free space to develop something I'm truly passionate about, and I did nothing. For me to start taking advantage of this class, I needed to stop waiting for things to happen and take control of my life. Even though Maggie was my center mid, I wanted to be a center mid too. About a month later, this is where I came up with the idea of creating a podcast instead of an article. Since adolescents are more likely to listen to a podcast than read an article, this allowed us to reach our intended audience. We first started this process by mapping out our episode topics and the things we would talk about during those episodes. When it came to the point we were ready to record, our schedules were so packed we had no time. And when one of us was free, the other one was most likely busy. After a few weeks, we eventually found time where both of us were available and we started recording. And what we thought would be the hardest part actually turned out to be pretty easy. Starting this process, we had no clue what we were going to use to record the podcast, but after just a little bit of research, we found that we were able to record on an app called Anchor. This app allowed us to write a transcript, write a description, name the different episodes, and publish it on Spotify all for free. We ended up publishing three episodes titled The Life of Student Athlete, Good vs. Bad Coaches, and The Pros and Cons of Youth Sports. After we released these episodes, I tore my ACL playing soccer. The recovery period for an ACL tear is around 9 to 12 months. And as a competitive soccer player, this was devastating news. As surgery was scheduled, I found myself researching and listening to people's experiences through their recovery as a way of coping. I found that I actually benefited a lot from listening to others. After surgery, I had 0% muscle left in my quad and I'm unable to move my leg at all. For the first three weeks after my surgery, I slept an average of three to four hours a night due to the pain. 
And for the first three weeks after my surgery, I couldn't lift my leg at all. My life now res revolves around how straight I can get my knee and how far I can bend it. I had to relearn how to walk for the second time this school year, but this time I had to relearn how to walk with a new ACL. Tearing my ACL is easily one of the most painful and difficult things I've ever experienced, not just physically, but mentally. I question myself if I'll ever return to the athlete I was, will I ever be able to run again? If I feel so good right now, why can't I just play and why me? But by listening to others' experiences, I, if I work hard enough, I'll come back better than I was before. This process has taught me how, how, taught me the impact of sharing your stories with others. Just like how I was able to benefit from other stories, the listeners, of, the listeners of our podcast are able to benefit from our stories. This year has put me through hell, but instead of leaving my life to others, instead I left it to me. I became the centerman.